Happy April, everybody! Spring has sprung, flowers are blooming, birds are chirping, and Mother Nature has unleashed a relentless barrage of neon yellow pollen to wreak havoc on your mucous membrane. So if you're staying inside, for obvious reasons, there are plenty of new games to keep you busy. Here are April 2024's biggest games. As always, we do our best to be comprehensive and accurate, but sometimes we goof. Last month, we forgot to tell you about a few games that did come out. The Mega Man-like Berserk Boy dropped for basically everything on March 6th. Snufkin, Melody of Moomin Valley did the same a day later, and Reverse Collapse, codename Bakery, despite sounding totally made up, hit Steam on March 21st. In addition to forgetting to include games that do exist, we also remember to include one game that does not, which was the PC version of MLB The Show. That is only on consoles, holding true to the age-old proverb, you can't play baseball with a mouse and keyboard. I forget who said that. I think it was Rousseau, possibly Balzac. Anyway, let's get into April. On the second, Withering Rooms hits Xbox Series and PS5. This is a 2.5D horror adventure set in a procedurally generated Victorian mansion, and it kind of looks like if Silent Hill was an arcade game. I mean, different from the Silent Hill arcade game they actually made. Did you know they made that? They made one. Look it up. On the fourth, there's Beat Slayer, which sounds like a Beat Saber clone, but it's in fact an isometric roguelite rhythm-based hack and slash about fighting robots. That's on PC. Also on PC, and also a roguelite, Pathfinder Gallowspire Survivors, which is set in the universe of the second most popular fantasy tabletop RPG that's been in early access since last year, but it's now officially a bona fide 100% real game. Version 1.0. You get it, Pathfinder. Piss off, Scavlander. On everything, there's Freedom Planet 2, the cartoony pixel platformer, and on PC, PS5, and all the Xboxes, Turbo Golf Racing leaves early access. If you haven't been keeping track, that does for golf what Rocket League did for soccer, which is to say, it makes you play it with little tiny cars. Like actual little tiny cars, not just golf carts. Keep your eyes downfield! Cut across the fourth fairway! Don't on April 5th, Sons of Valhalla comes to PC. This is a side-scrolling strategy with a healthy dose of base building and battling, and it's made its way onto a lot of people's wish lists, so this could very well become one of this month's biggest surprise hits. On April 9th, Children of the Sun comes to PC, and I guess you could describe this as a shooter since it's about a sniper on a revenge mission, but the twist is that you control the bullet, which makes it more like a puzzle game. So think like Sniper Elite meets Super Hot, kind of, but with a grimy comic book aesthetic. So also kind of like the movie Wanted, but not like Wanted the comic, because that was really different for the movie. Basically, you can bend the bullet around and make it go hit guys in the head. So keep this one in your crosshairs. On the 9th, the 5v5 MOBA-inspired hero shooter Gigantic gets a definitive Rampage edition, which is coming to the Playstations, Xboxes, and PC. On April 10th, Araban Shadow Legacy Stealth drops on PC. Not actually because we know about the release date in advance, but it is a stealth platformer, so you will literally do a lot of stealthy stuff to get the drop on people. Get it? Still in the 10th, everybody's favorite homebody dolphin is back for more indoor antics in House Flipper 2, which is now on new-gen consoles. I'm kidding about the dolphin part. It's actually a game about renovation real estate, and yes, I basically made that same joke when it hit PC a while back, but you know what? I also slapped a fresh coat of paint on it, redid the bathroom fixtures, and I'm putting it back on the market, so here's hoping I get above asking. And finally on the 10th, PC players get yet another fantasy title that's literally the title of the game. And as you can probably tell, this is an open-world top-down RPG with wizards and dragons and so on, and based on the title, it is clearly not taking itself too seriously, which I appreciate. On April 11th, the Fallout Special Anthology comes to PC, which collects Fallout's 1, 2, Tactics, 3, New Vegas, 4, and 76, as well as all the expansions and DLC included with the Ultimate and Game of the Year editions, respectively. If you're paying close attention, the physical edition is packaged in the same mini new collector box as the initial Fallout Anthology that came out back in 2015, but this one includes the two Fallout games that have come out since then. Also on the 11th, Infection Free Zone enters early access on PC. Zombie games are a dime a dozen, but this top-down strategy game lets you pick any any real world location, buildings and all, and then use that area as your base camp where survivors can rebuild society. So it's a little bit like Plague Inc, but on a much more intimate scale. So theoretically, this is your chance to test out all those zombie apocalypse plans where you hole up in your local shopping mall or big box store, or you know, where, where zombies invade your high school and bite your principal in the head. I'm not sure how one-to-one -one this is, but it's a really cool concept nonetheless. On April 16th, Obsidian's Honey, I Shrunk the Survival Game Grounded opens up to a whole new audience when it comes to PS4, PS5, and Nintendo Switch. Version 1.4 will also be dropping across all platforms around then, which probably includes some bug fixes, as well as some new bugs, in the literal insect sense. If fighting big bugs and being grounded isn't your jam, you're in luck because that day also sees the release of Europa on PC, an exploration-based open-world game where you zip around on a jetpack, which looks nice and chill, and probably doesn't have any big spiders. 
Moon Studios did some wonderful things for the Metroidvania genre with the Ori games, and now they're aiming to do the same for isometric action RPGs in No Rest for the Wicked. The isometric camera angle might suggest this is taking some cues from Diablo, but it apparently plays a lot more like Dark Souls, so be prepared to roll with the punches or away from them and probably die a whole bunch. Either way, that hits early access on PC on the 18th. The co-op cyberpunk roguelite Arc Runner comes to all the consoles just shy of a year since it launched on PC, and there's also Umarangi Generation, which is according to the official description, quote, a first-person photography game in the shitty future, which looks a lot like Sludge Life. That's already on Switch and PC, but on the 18th, it's gonna be on PS4 and PS5, and a dedicated VR version is also coming to PSVR 2 and MetaQuest that very same day as well. On the 22nd, Dead Island 2 is coming to Steam after a year of Epic Games Store exclusivity, and really, for any Steam users who'd been waiting around 12 years for a proper sequel to 2011's Dead Island, what's one more year? Anyway, now you can hit zombies in the face with an electric shovel. Have fun out there. Speaking of long waits, on the 23rd, Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes finally drops, and if you haven't been keeping track, this is the Suikoden spiritual successor overseen by Yoshitaka Moriyama, who was behind the first two games in that series. Ayuden Chronicles blew the hell up on Kickstarter back in 2020 and was originally slated for a 2022 release. Unfortunately, it takes a cool minute to make a JRPG with 100 unique playable characters, so it got kicked down the road a couple times, but now it is finally coming out for everything. Also that day is Tales of Kenzera Zao, which at face value is a Metroidvania, but there's actually a lot going on here. It's directed by Abubakar Salem, who you may know as the voice of Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins, and who also starred in HBO's Raised by Wolves. In addition to being influenced by Bantu folklore and Salem's own experiences with South African tribal groups while shooting Raised by Wolves, it's also inspired by his grief following the death of his father. The way he explains it, in a Metroidvania, you start out totally lost with nothing, but you gradually figure out where to go and get the tools to get you there, which is a neat metaphor for grief, and it's also really cool to see people channel tragedy in a creative way, and it's even cooler to get a glimpse of the human side of game development. Anyway, that's a new gen Switch and PC. If that's too heavy and you'd rather just eat pizza and stomp the Foot Clan, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Wrath of the Mutants is out for everything. This is a port of the 2017 arcade game based on the 2012 cartoon, which was itself paying homage to the 1991 classic beat-em-up Turtles in Time, so it'll probably click for anybody who got hooked on Shredder's Revenge. Everybody has their favorite version of the Turtles, and it's easy to fault the latest reboot for not being as good as the one you grew up with, right but I feel like with each new mutation, it also gets easier to appreciate just how simultaneously versatile and timeless these characters are as a whole. When that 2012 Turtles show debuted, I was turned off by the CG animation and never really gave it a fair shake and probably about how they messed up the Rat King's design. But since then, we've gotten the Michael Bay Turtles, Rise of the TMNT, and Mutant Mayhem, plus all sorts of crazy stuff in the comics. And even if not all of that stuff appeals to me, I'm just glad it exists. Like, there's still Turtles. That's great. Maybe I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. I like Turtles. But it warms my heart reading the comments on this game's trailer and seeing a younger generation of Turtles fans being nostalgic for a version of the Turtles that still somehow seems new to me because I'm old and so tired. Anyway, cowabunga, everybody. On April 25th, Saga Emerald Beyond hits the PlayStation Switch and PC, and that is the latest installment in one of Square Enix's myriad JRPG franchises. And that same day, another Crab's Treasure drops on everything but PS4. Despite the cartoony aesthetic, this is a Souls-like, so it'll presumably push back a fair amount. And hey, why not? Older gamers might have more patience, theoretically, but there's also nothing inherently M-rated about difficult combat, so this could very well be baby's first Soulsborne, and sh it's probably easier than Little Mermaid for NES. On April 26th, Sandland hits PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. This is the open-world vehicular action RPG based on the second or third most popular manga by the late and great Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball. The Sandland manga was one of his first new projects after Dragon Ball wrapped up, and it's got so much of the same DNA. You play as a little super-strong demon prince named Beelzebub, and you roam around the titular desert fighting monsters with your bare hands and a variety of sweet vehicles conveniently stored in your handy-dandy dino caps or hoi poi capsules, I suppose. A bunch of these vehicles actually rolled right off the Dragon Ball lot. For instance, there's that motorcycle that Bulma and Goku cruised around on, except now it's got guns on top of it. And you can also hop into Emperor Pilaf's pot-bellied mech suit, which is awesome. I love I love his designs. I love his vehicles. That dude is wonderful. He built all these model kits. He loved, he loved cars. He loved mini bikes. I miss that dude. That same day has another anime adaptation with Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, Sweep the Board, which looks like Mario Party, but with Demon Slayer. And I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen more licensed games take this approach. I'm not saying we need more of them because I hate Mario Party, but throwing together a bunch of mini games and stitching them together with a big board game seems like an easier lift than a full-fledged campaign. Just throwing that out there. 
On a visibly more ambitious note, Stellar Blade hits PS5, which looks a little like Nier Automata, with the saturation bumped up a few notches and some big scary Souls bosses, but it also sort of looks like if you poured visual pieces of literally every other modern video game into Unreal 5 and hit Puree, it is definitely gorgeous, but it's gorgeous in the same way that a super big gulp full of every flavor of soda in the fountain is sweet. Whether that's a good or a bad thing really comes down to personal taste. If you want to drink a whole big gulp full of every flavor soda, that is all you, buddy. Have fun. Meanwhile, on the absolute opposite end of the spectrum, that day also sees the release of Manor Lords on PC, which is a medieval strategy game with some absolutely stunning graphics, and man, it looks like a Peter Bruegel painting running in Unreal. Or I guess just like actual, actual fields. It looks like actual fields. Put that on the box. Real looking fields. You heard it right here, IGN.com. Anyway, Manor Lords, have fun with that. On the 30th, you can be sad and time travel about it in Braid, which gets an anniversary edition on everything, and it's also coming to iOS and Android exclusively for Netflix subscribers. I guess 2024 is technically the 15th anniversary of the PC, PS3, and Mac OS versions of the game, which gradually trickled out over the course of 2009, but the game debuted in the middle of 2008. Then again, it's a game about creatively manipulating time, so they could have just called this the 20th anniversary just to see if anybody was paying attention, but that would require Jonathan Blow to not take himself seriously for a brief moment, which would defy all laws of space and time in the known universe. At some point in April, PlayStation owners will be able to get their feet wet in the formerly Xbox exclusive Sea of Thieves, which is hitting PS5, and they'll be able to take the plunge into Dave the Diver, which is coming to PS4 and 5. Nope Challenge is coming to MetaQuest, letting you virtually face the hottest new phobias, such as clowns and spiders and heights, to which I say, nope, thank you. Also with a vague April release window is Songs of Silence. That's a fantasy strategy game on PC where you must defend your realm from an all-encompassing silence, which honestly sounds kind of nice. I could use some peace and quiet. And finally, there's the grid-based tactical roguelike deck builder Tendril, which is a grid-based tactical roguelike deck builder on PC. And there you have it, it's April 2024's biggest game releases that we currently know about as of me recording this video on March 20th at 4.28 p.m. As always, tell us in the comments what you're playing this month, and if we missed anything, politely let us know about it. A big huge thank you to everybody who watched this video, and of course to Amanda Medina and Chris Del Padre, without whose hard work this video would just be me yelling at the corner of what was once my guest bedroom. Loud noises! There would not even be a camera there, I'd just be in the corner yelling, like that guy in the, in the Blair Witch Project. He wasn't yelling though, he was just standing there, I think. I haven't seen that movie in a while. I'll be back next month to tell you about May, unless we decide to pump the brakes, because it's too soon to be May. Let's just do another February episode. February was nice and short, except for this year it was a day too long. Let's talk about February in May. I'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody.